Residents of Othangathi, a town in eastern South Africa, have assessed the damage to their homes and community after a storm ripped through the area. Local authorities on Tuesday said flooding caused by torrential rain and fierce winds in South Africa's eastern coast killed at least 22 people. A spokesperson from Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality at the heart of the flood said at least 11 people died in Eastern Cape. The provincial government in neighboring KwaZulu Natal also said that 11 people had died in and around the port city of Durban. <laughs> But on those days, oh, Bengavela, Bagiti, best night thing. I yoke in the labanga season. I, we bagu manzi, we shingo bazuglari. We basu bano sako lai inim peti manzi. Yoke inim manzi. Si zama kono guguti zamuti. Si lale koyam koge ni kota si be si be simbati. Njoban bana la maplango. Bengali sa abantu abakashi lela. So manzi njoban guwe la maplango. Shuti abasa na inda uksar. Shuti mina. Hera nzami nda uksar. Nzami le nabo. Of which and to discuss this, we're joined by Thabili Unkujana, a senior economist, National Agricultural Marketing Council. Good afternoon. Glad to have you join me. Uh, if you can hear me, I'll start off with a question. Uh, what were the primary factors contributing to the severity of the flooding in Othangathi in South Africa? Okay, since we're having an audio challenge with our guest, uh, can you hear me? Okay, so good, uh, good afternoon uh, to you. Yes, nice yes, to I have can you, you join me. Go ahead, please. Uh, right, yeah. So the, the, the basically the issue, um, you know, as, as you are seeing from the pictures, is that there has been a severe tornado that affected the eastern part of the country. And then this covers um, mostly uh, KZN, KwaZulu Natal, and the parts of the Eastern Cape province and several towns have been impacted there. And uh, at this stage, the, the main issue, you know, that has been being accessed, it is how much has been the damage, because as we are seeing, the, the pictures that have been circulating around is that the main problem uh, is been infrastructure. And this includes, you know, the power lines that have been, that have fallen off, the, the roads that have been covered mainly with the fallen trees, and, and somehow some roads that have been some what are uh, swept away by the flooding because this uh, bed with the head quite a significant amount of water that was affecting several areas. And mm -hmm. another issue is that some of the, especially in, in the Tongati town that has been, the area that has been impacted, it is mostly an area that is important in South Africa generally also because it is a town, an area where a lot of sugar it is produced and KZN as a province, it is a leading um, a province in, in producing, um, you know, sugar for the country and of course supplying a lot of uh, households there with uh, livelihoods and, and this uh, and, and of course the province itself, it is quite key in terms of the infrastructure that it has because it leads to one of the biggest, you know, ports in, in Africa may. and it's important mm, for, Just to find out country. from you. Yes. How did local authorities respond to the emergency caused by the storm? I'm talking about rescue efforts and also disaster management. Yeah, so what has happened is that uh, the government um, has, was on the scene immediately after a few hours after the you know the, 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 st the storm uh, subsided a little bit. And then, of course, it's working with a number of NGOs that normally do work around these matters in South Africa. And, of course, now the issue has been to provide some temporal shelters, you know, for the people that have been impacted by the situation. And of course, this is something that is going to take a while because, as I was saying earlier on, that there's a number of infrastructures sometimes to get into some of the areas that have been severely impacted for this organized tedious process for some areas, uh, areas where people can be sheltered. And of course, uh, some basic food and some 
and some blankets for all those that have been impacted by the Now, this leads to my next uh, question for you. Uh, what infrastructure were exposed by the storm and how much authorities address these issues to mitigate future risks? Um, so, uh, so, so for now, the main issue is at least uh, public infrastructure that has been impacted. It has been, uh, you know, the roads, uh, but to those other things, they can be easily in kind of sorted out because as I was saying earlier that the main problem has been the fallen branches of trees and some power lines that have been cut off. The, I think the something that is going to probably take a minute to solve, it is the issues of uh, the buildings that have fallen for the schools. Uh, the health healthcare clinics, you know, those ones are going to probably take some time. I remember that the, some of these areas that have been impacted by this and for the previous, you know, uh, uh, the devastations that have happened again in KZN, some of them, they have been impacted by those. So it appears to be a recurring, you know, circumstances. And of course, it, with, with those recurrences, it is going to probably take some time for the state to be able to carry on to fix them as suitably as Mm. as possible but those are some of the issues or any list infrastructures that have been impacted but of course i think the main issue it is to be able to deal with the issues that are related to climate to be able to have some disaster related uh, kind of programs to respond to all of this but unfortunately climate is something that is impacting across the world so each government is going to have to be able to have some sort of programs and plan accordingly and also monitor the situations uh, climate change, there's so much data that is provided and some of these issues can be seen coming uh, mm. uh, for, for some people to have some predictions and to prepare for them. Uh, Unkunjana, I'm tempted to ask you, were there any warning systems or even earlier alerts mechanisms in place to notify residents about the impending storm and potential flooding? And if so, how effective were they in preventing loss of life and as well as property damage? Um, so yes, uh, normally there was we have uh, South African weather services that normally issues you know warnings when stuff like this is to is predicted to happen, and again this time around it was it was there uh, a warning was issued I think level four was issued when there was flooding in Eastern Cape because KZN and Eastern Cape are two provinces that are kind of uh, parallel to, to one another that, that is that are both that have. Uh, are being separated by a border. So when the situation was happening in Eastern Cape, an issue was was alerted at least for the case at level four. But unfortunately, it appears as if what was was said it was more than what was anticipated, you know, by the authorities. Which is why we have seen the, the devastation to the extent that we have currently experienced uh, from that province. We hope things, you know, take a new turn there. Our condolences to those who lost their lives there in South Africa. Well, thank you so much for your time on the news. Thabili Unkujana, Senior Economist, National Agricultural Marketing Council. Thank you once again.